This is a Nexus Special, Episode 60, Apple September Event 2018, on Wednesday, September 12th, 2018. And now, within a standard rectangle. This Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersat. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns60. Big news today, eh? Yeah. Those new iPhones that you are totally going to get. I am totally going to get multiple new iPhones. You know it. You keep saying every year, you might get the iPhone this year, and then, lo and behold, you order another Samsung one roughly around the same time. Well, it's because roughly Samsung releases two phones every year. So it's it's always it's always Samsung time. Yeah, but this year, Apple released three iPhones. Three new premium iPhones, no less. Premium. That's right. Um, you know, before we talk about our big highlights and you know what we think about them, there there are some interesting show notes that you might want to take a little bit of a look at. So if you want the full recap of the Apple September event uh, for this year, you can go to uh, the Apple website and watch the entire keynote directly and enjoy um, all too much beautiful and the most powerful and the most so-and-so phones ever it's very blow away <laughs> that's that's not a yeah they could have come up with something a little bit more original that's very phil schiller <laughs> it is uh if if one and a half hours of phil schiller is too much for you you can also get by with the 12 minute recap version from the verge which is pretty fun and for something a little bit more raw you can read brian's tweets in this uh twitter collection that he made for this very purpose so let's hop into it yep we'll mostly just talk about the products today they said we'll talk about two things and that was apple watch and iphone whoa so they started with the apple watch series 4 which had leaked and we knew was coming yep um i'm quite impressed with this uh i'll talk about that after we talk about what's new (laughs) yeah so 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 to begin here i always like to talk about pricing first because it puts into context what's new compared to either your previous watch or the watch you don't have yet so the new base model series 4 watch will cost 399 um and that has does that one have gps or is that that's just the plain wi-fi gps i believe it has gps i will double check for you yeah okay so then uh while brian's checking the 399 base model um and then the 499 upgrade will get you cellular as well uh of course you have to pay you know, some vendor, um, too much money to have that connection, but you know, it might be worth it. Uh, if you want to go for a run. Definitely. Um, so yes, the GPS is three ninety nine with cellular is four ninety nine, and, uh, there are stainless steel ones as well, which make the GPS and cellular go up to six ninety nine, and, Wait, those are stainless steel. Yeah. And then, you know, the more loops and things make it go up to yeah. even more. So, so the, the, these new these prices are totally in line with what everybody thought. I think they're the same base model prices as last year for the Series 3. They, yeah. Those seem fine. Sounds right. I don't. Um, so, so, so other new parts about um, the watch, which are really good news for everybody. All of the past bands are compatible with these new watches and we'll tell tell you why in a moment why that's somewhat important and, and maybe interesting and and furthermore i guess it's been confirmed from somewhere that all of the watch bands in the future will also be compatible with older models as well which again we should tell you why that's important do you want to tell them why that's important yeah so the size the screen sizes of the watches has increased so no longer is it a uh, 38 and 42, but it's a 40 and 44 millimeter case or screen. Yeah. So the case didn't change much, but the screen did. Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah, they shrunk the bezels and they put rounded corners on the screen. So the resolution has changed and that allows for some really cool new things. Um, they, they showed off kind of a little bit of a new design that it's more circle based um, and I think this will fit in with watchOS 5, but there's new uh, watch faces that contain more information just because there's more screen real estate now. Um, and that looks really nice because the ex- existing watch faces I have on my Series 3 Apple Watch are great and all, but there is I do wish in some cases I could show 
even more information and just overload myself that much more. You know, it'd be interesting, and I and I I'm sure somebody's did did it by now, but I didn't see it yet. It'd be interesting to see if somebody did the calculations on what the new surface area is compared to the previous versions. Um, you know, you're probably not getting you know it's 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 a millimeter in each direction effectively, right? So you're not getting uh you know an extra inch and a half of screen space on your little watch. It's a few millimeters. Yeah, definitely. But I think it's still an improvement. It's it's the biggest redesign they've done since the original Apple Watch. Absolutely, and I think it's about time because I don't know. I don't think they could have sold um, the same shell and casing again. Um, do we know how much thinner it became? Um, I'm looking that up right now. Uh, okay. So the Apple Watch traditionally over time has gotten so between the Series Zero and the Series Three, it got. I think a little bit thicker almost every generation in some way or another. I think the GPS one added a little bit. And that's because they kept adding features to it. Um, so it says the Series 3 is 11.4 millimeters thin, and the Series 4 is 10.7 millimeters thin. Okay, a whole millimeter and a half. Yeah, I think that's, well, not quite a whole millimeter. But yeah, that's that's quite good. Um and so they, you know, introduced the new S4 processor, which they say is 64-bit now. Though I saw someone was posting the instruction set is ARM64 underscore 32. So I think they're mapping weirdly there. Well, they might anyway. have to do that to support 32-bit programs that are still running on the watch. Yeah, but I think it was some more low-level. The chip might be 64-bit, but the OS is fully 32-bit still or Right, exactly. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of negates any reason to have 64-bit. But. They're working on it. Exactly. Yeah. Watch OS 6. There you go. Um, if you turn the watch around, you'll see a, a, a very different sensor on the bottom. Um, it's a second-generation optical heart sensor as well as an um, electrical heart sensor, or ECG. Um, and that'll be available through another app later in the year. Uh, and I think this is the first over-the-counter available ECG in the u.s and it's fda approved and all the the bells and whistles around that and so i think that should really help um for people who have heart conditions or need to test anything out i'm not so versed in that yeah but in the realm of health um they've added fall detection so if they detect a sudden movement they showed some images of if you fall backwards you your arms kind of flail up if you fall forwards you instinctively put your arms out in front of you to catch yourself um, Hopefully, yes. So if you if you fall and you're not responsive for a minute, it'll automatically call emergency services and contact your emergency contacts. Um, they also have a low heart rate detection, and this is in addition to the in WatchOS four the high heart rate detection. I think that was only available in WatchOS or in Watch Apple Watch Series three. So now the bottom end as well. Um, so there's just way more heart monitoring and heart health coming in and they can do this to detect um afib which is i think when your heart beats irregularly i think Mm -hmm. yep so lots of good information there and you can i think save a lot of this record as like a nice pdf that you can send to your doctor or something so that's a nice feature if this eliminates the need for like a big old heart monitor that you have to take up check out from the hospital and pay thousands of dollars for that's a huge win I think. totally even if, even if it's only you know it's still expensive right so it's still you know four hundred dollars for somebody but it it's it's certainly more accessible even at the price so uh the the pros might outweigh those cons yeah totally mm-hmm. um they also have a new digital crown and this time with haptic feedback i'm not sure if this is i think it's a physical feedback versus a haptic engine Mm-hmm. They showed a little, like a blowout of the the dial. It looked like there were some notches inside that might be the, what's causing that haptic feedback to come through. Yeah, I was reading some tweets about it during the day, and um, people said when after they tried it, they they didn't think that it was really, you know, that all that uh, nothing certainly to write home about. But once once you use it, you think, well, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you know that it's kind of like a scroll wheel that's that's the, ratcheting versus exactly. free wheel. Yeah. And, and that, that can certainly be helpful when you're scrolling through a list or you're just scrolling through something. Definitely. I find it's hard to, to scroll with the, the wheel and have it 
stick into place. Even when I'm using my finger scrolling through lists, yep. it's impossible to land it where you want. Yeah. It always like then uh, scrolls one more or less than you'd like. Um, that sensor module on the bottom looks, I think, pretty sharp. It's it's got a you know bright green dot, but it almost looks like HAL nine thousand from as opposed Space to Odyssey. HAL eight thousand, which uses the uh, green monitor. Um, <laughs> it looks really cool. Um, and and so so Brian before the show in the fringe, which you can listen to, um, they had a, a picture on the website on the Apple website that Brian showed me. And and of course when you scroll to it, you just see this big green dot in this concentric ring of circles, and it, and it looks looks like a hell. But what's funny is that it's green, and they, of course, you know that they made it red first. Um, but then somebody said, "No, we can't do that." Well, I think <laughs> I think it's green because um, your blood is red, and green and red are the opposite of the color spec or color wheel, and so they kind of cancel each other out to be a gray, which is I think easier to detect. That could be. Um, also green is the most visible color in the light spectrum for humans, but I guess this is a machine, so it doesn't make sense. It must be related to the color of red. I wouldn't put it past marketing. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, so I believe that's most of what's in the Apple watch. A few other things are, uh, they move the microphone from the left side to the right side. Um, the, the S4 system on a chip is, quote, faster than ever, up to two times faster. Um, they have a louder speaker, which I think is 50% louder, um, and better cellular reception. They they changed around the case a little bit and I think improved reception. I don't know if the front and back can be used for antennas now. I'm not sure. But yeah, better reception. Hooray. But, but for sure, an overall solid update to the watch. Very solid, I think. I'd... I'm debating buying it, and I bought one last year. So <laughs> let's don't hope worry. I don't. <laughs> Three phones a year. You can do it, too. Uh, I'm <laughs> not like you, Ryan. I know. Well, hey, speaking of phones, Brian, let's talk about iPhones. Hooray. Yeah, so this year had some leaks, not quite as extensive as last year. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, until the end. But we didn't. <laughs> yeah. We knew <laughs> until different the things end, each year. Until the end, there was not a leak in sight, and then it was over. This uh, this morning or last night, um, so the the night before the event, the there were site maps on the Apple website that that showed the the full marketing names and space options for each of the new iPhones. So those were those names were confirmed, but they had been out and around before, so probably confirmed elsewhere already. Yep. So of course, uh, um, just recently, last week even. On our uh, on our own show podcast, uh, we talked about the leaked names that we knew at the time, and so we got most of it right. I think we we kind of um, saw most of this coming, but for sure, I don't know if any of us saw the Max coming. Yeah, I want. I can't remember if that was out when we recorded that or not. No, that was not out. That was that was brand new, fresh leak. Okay. Um, so let's let's talk about what these things are called and how much they cost and some some features. So we are introducing to you the iPhone X S and the iPhone X S Max, not Max like the operating system and computer, but Max as in maximum. Apple would like you to say 10s and 10s Max, which Good also luck. I saw a fantastic tweet that said the the iPhone. Tennis, the iPhone tennis match, and the iPhone tenor for the ten R. <laughs> yeah, I that was great. Yeah, um, Aaron uh, would like us to say iPhone X mess. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know. I mean, it's the names are all over the place here. Um, even even during our show note gathering earlier tonight, Brian and I had the hardest time talking about these two phones because the names are just a little bit hard to read and write. Yeah. And it's not just us. Even the Apple website is wildly inconsistent with the way they're referred to. And then, of course, the press gets a hold of the names and they get even more out of whack. So um, I guess. I wonder, is is Apple trying to force us to say iPhone XS? I don't because Because no. everyone said X last year and that was wrong. But since it was the only letter, it was okay. But now it's 
no. excess. And that is that sounds pretty strange to say, and it can look like extra small. But it also sounds like you just too. said excess. Exactly. So, so I need to try to good. say 10, 10S. I, yeah. it's, it's not good no matter what you do. Um, but, you know, you know, it, it could have been worse, I guess, maybe. Um, somebody was joking around on Twitter, like, oh, it could have been called the iPhone X2 and Y. Yeah, that could have been that worse. W- that would be strange because they called it the iPhone 10 last year. X- and then well, suddenly, X2, though. now you pronounce it as an X instead of as a 10. Well, no, it's 10 too. 10 too. Yeah. It's almost the next hour. I see. Um, I see. <laughs> uh, so um, let's talk about the pricing. So there's there's obviously two models now. Um, the XS or 10S is the standard regular sized 10 sized model. Um, what is the screen size of the 10? That's a 5.8 inch. 5.8 inch. And that's at $1,000 for 64 gigs. Pretty Pretty much the same. Exactly the same, in fact. The new yep. one, of course, the XS Max, gosh, it's awful, um, is, is starting at a very odd price, in my opinion. It's only $1,100. That's only $100 more. Yeah, and I think part of that is related because there are really very few differing features between the two of them, so no huge reason to charge much much more. I, I think I think the, 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 the two features that differ are the screen size and the battery size. Exactly. Yeah. So I I'm I'm very impressed that Apple was able to restrain themselves uh in in the price gouging this year. So that's good. I'm glad to see it. Um that's But cool. now now they get you with price gouging because those start at 64 gigabytes, which isn't quite enough for me. So I have to then spend another $150 to get the next size up, which is 256 gigabytes. Yeah, I don't understand what you do with your phone, but I I have been purchasing 64 gigabyte phones for the past many years, and they've been fine. Let me read to you how many applications I have on my phone. Maybe in the fringe. Um, So there's a new chip. What is this new chip? The A12 Bionic. Not Whoa. to be confused with the A11 Bionic. So but. they kept the Bionic thing again this year, and that might refer to their neural networking. It might refer to their health monitoring stuff. I don't know, I'm but I don't like it. Yeah, it's probably just continuation of the neural network. They they added more features into this chip from the A11. There's they nothing talked. Bionic about neural networking. But it has the word neural in it. That means brains and... The word neural is not in bionic. Bleep, bloop. No, no, no. But like neural is a concept we know to be with brains and it's a computer thing. So it's like combining the two. I don't, I don't like it. It's wrong. Yeah. Um, so this I'm a uses, little surprised they didn't change the name, I will say. It could have been, I don't know, what's what's been on? Cybernetic. A thir- the A13 cybernetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this features two powerful cores and four efficient cores, which I believe is the same sco- um, core configuration as last year, but that's always Sounds good. Sounds right. Yeah. Um, they're faster than last year. Um, so it, it has four ish cores for the GPU, um, which is also faster. Um, and then it's also worth noting that it is running on a seven nanometer process, which can mean different things to different people who have read and are in the know. Um, but this is not equivalent to the Intel 7 nanometer issue. Um, apparently, uh, different fabrications can measure their nanometer size for their uh, transistors differently. So what what might be 7 nanometer here could actually be 10, man- 10 nanometer somewhere else. Yeah. So Either it, way, I think it's pretty impressive. And yeah. I think it is... TSMC, who I believe so. that's the right. I think they're the ones who've done the seven nanometer. And I remember hearing about that a couple of months ago. Yep. So, and I think their unit is a little different than Intel's. So I, I was reading some, saying, yeah. some wonderful tweets today about the speed of this phone. According to my sources on the Twitter, who were there in person, it's basically the same in terms of speed as the previous ten. So. Hmm. I'm sure I'm sure there are features that'll be faster. So, for example, um, when we talk about the cameras in a moment, and you're doing some of the more advanced, um, like AR functionality, 
it's possible that this new chip might have better capabilities for handling some of those heavier workloads. Yep. But for general usage, I think the speed sort of at a threshold where year over year might be a little bit less noticeable than in the past. Are you saying Moore's law isn't true for Apple anymore? I am saying it, it that certainly was for the last many years. I am saying that Moore's law for consumers might not be true anymore. Yeah. That's not the same. <laughs> so let's talk yeah. about the cameras. Yeah. So uh, each model of the, the new phones has the, the same module exactly. Which um, is you know, great. It, yeah. It has the standard normal one and then the, the 2X telephoto one. They have different apertures. Super so, cool. Um it's it, it seems a lot like the iPhone 10 camera. Um, yeah. So there's, there's some so yeah. there so it's interesting. I think it's it's cool to note that both phones have the same camera module. So previously when Apple has released phones with two camera modules, only the bigger phone has had the two camera module pair. Yeah, except so. last year the iPhone 10 was a middle but bigger camera or phone. Yeah, so it, it also had the dual. Right. But so it's interesting because it's a, this is the first time both phones of a set have the same camera setup. So there's no camera differentiation. You don't pay more for getting a better camera. I'd say it's about time. It's been s- split since 2014. Yeah. So. Too long. Uh, so they have a uh, c- couple new features such as smart HDR which is uh, a more intelligent and faster HDR than traditionally. Yep. I was reading that it's supposed to be similar to how the pixel processes images. Um, I don't know what that means. So we'll see it uh, in the field soon enough from, you know, reviewers and such. Uh, if it's if it's really all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I'm excited to use it. Um, yeah. There's also, like, I don't know what they call it, but to me it was like a dynamic bokeh. So mm-hmm. you can change the aperture in an image after you take the photo. Yeah. So this is where it's it's a pr- applying that post processing to make it look like a really fancy photo where it blurs the background. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just changing the way it uses the data to blur the background. And this is totally just a software thing that any iPhone that has two cameras could implement. But I'm sure they're just enabling it for the 10s. Um, and I think there are even some apps in the App Store that can do this already. Yeah, and I it's a totally cool gimmicky feature that they can totally include. I have to ask, were there any mentions of, what is it called, Animoji? Uh, I didn't see any. Good. I think Animoji, I mean, there are screenshots, so maybe the iPhone XS can process them faster because it's faster. You know, mapping to your face. <laughs> but again, Animoji are something that is locked in software. Any iPhone with a front-facing camera can do that. Yeah. Well... I'm glad I'm glad nobody paid any attention to that. So finally on this set of iPhones, we have noted here that it is IP68 certified, which means it can hang out in a pool of water 2 meters deep for about 30 minutes. Yeah, so it's, you know, double the water proofness of the other or older iPhones. Disclaimer, it's not waterproof and also don't take it into the shower. Yeah. It's Don't not be steam like me. Proof. Don't shower with your electronics. It's not steam proof. Yeah. That's the only way you can clean a watch, though. Wait, does S stand for steam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no? man. There, um, there, was a, there was a new Apple watch face that they had some different particle effects and things, including one that's around. They call it vapor, but nice. I'm, I'm waiting for vape memes around the Apple watch. I'm sure it it'll happen. It seems like happen. a very internet thing to do. So, so there was another phone today. This was the kind of the odd one out uh, that we talked about last week on PodKit. This is the iPhone XR, also known as the iPhone XR. Brian, what does the R stand for? Unclear. No, that's not... The R can't stand for unclear. That's not how words work. Really weird name. Okay, that works for me. Um, So this is the iPhone X really weird name. Um, (laughs) And it begins at the low, low price of $750. Um, so let's, let's tell everybody more about why this phone exists. So Apple likes to have this price umbrella, right? And the price umbrella is, um, sort of their way of kind of competing with the rest of the market. So they'll, they'll make a bunch of phones year over year and the phones from previous years will just get pushed down in the product line 
and the new phones will take up the premium spot in the umbrella pricing. Yep. Um, this year, they decided to be a little bit more aggressive than other years, and they introduced a middle tier option that that um, you know sort of does an atypical Apple thing. It sort of introduces different compromises, so you pay less and you lose some features or some premiumness, but you can still get something that approaches the premium tier. Um, so yeah. let's talk about this. So it's, you know, uh, replacing where the iPhone 8 was up until today. Mm-hmm. Um, so the iPhone 10 is no longer being sold, just so you have that in your mind. Bye. Um, bye. So this, is, this reminds me a lot of the iPhone 5C because it comes in lots of colors so including product red out of the box there's a blue red you know white black yellow there was like a weird orange i was that the yellow or is there an orange one no there's there's like a pink orange i don't remember what it's called it's like uh pink orange i don't know um and there's also the product red one which looks beautiful and it's also coming out out the door it's coming with the release set so you don't have to wait nine months um, you know, approximately three days before the next year's iPhones come out to get the product red version of this year's iPhone. Yeah. So one of the ways they cut the price of the 10 model down to make it 750 is they made a, a different decision with the screen. So instead of using OLED, which allows pixels to be selectively on or off, they used the LCD, which means the whole screen is either on or off. Uh, they said they had some new technology that allowed them to have a curved LCD. I don't know to what degree that's true or not. I don't know if that's new technology proprietary to Apple or if that's just an industry standard. New um, to Apple. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty cool, though. So it's, it's a cheaper display. Um, according to people who were there in person, it is significantly less beautiful than the equivalent 10x i mean oh my gosh i can't even do it 10s um (laughs) 10s screen but it's still totally serviceable i mean it's it's at least as good as the 8 screen so that's fine yeah and so speaking about that screen it's 6.1 inches so it's between the 10s and the 10s max and this Um, is why we always kind of thought it was kind of the odd one out because how does the cheaper phone have a bigger screen than the more expensive phone? But that's kind of the thing here. So you are, you're paying less, you're getting more in a certain place, and you're getting less in a certain place. This is an atypical Apple thing to do because you're ch- there's a compromise now. So normally on the product matrix that we all know from, I don't know, how many years ago is that now? From uh, 20 years ago now, the, the product <laughs> matrix back then it was a four by f- two by two grid, and if you started in the top left corner, it was free, and if you went down to the bottom right corner, it was most expensive. Um, so this is sort of a weird one. So like you you get some features and not other features. You get some price but not all the price. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting device. So there's a few other things. So there's no 3D touch. Yep, there's only a single camera, but still that 12 megapixel one. And it, this um, this camera is totally fine. So, um, do we know if this is the single camera from the like the uh, from the X or is it the single camera from the iPhone eight? Um, it's the same one as the ten S. Okay, great. It's just the non telephoto one. Perfect. I think that's totally fine for people who want to save a little bit of money. Yep. So it it's water resistant for up to one meter versus the two of the other ones. Yep. So this is IP sixty seven certified. Yep. So that's it ha- Still has, better than nothing. Has the same 812 Bionic chip. It has wireless charging. Um, it comes in 64, 128, and 256 yep. versus 64, 256, 512. Um, they call their screen Liquid Retina HD instead of Super Ret- instead of Super Retina HD. So they had to come up with a different way to distinguish LCD for 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 the marketing team. So liquid it is. Liquid it is. Um, it's not HDR, and it's. Uh, pixel density is 326 ppi which is the same as the iphone 8 and through the iphone 4 through the iphone 8 yep so it's 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 a in every way it is an iphone not 10 (laughs) classic (laughs) it's an iphone classic yeah why wasn't it called the iphone c then i don't know that's a good idea what 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 where did this r come from i really have no idea 
<laughs> I just, I, I, I'm not going to be able to rest well until I understand. Like the S has been well known. It S is the spank bump version. Wait, wait, wait. it's it's removed 3D touch. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's, that's a feature I've enjoyed using, at least. I, I, I don't understand. Well, um, so speaking of the pricing umbrella, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and 7 and 7 Plus remain in the lineup. So there are pricing updates for these. So 449 for the iPhone 7, 569 for the 7 Plus, 599 for the 8, 699 for the 8 Plus. So if you don't mind having a older phone and you want to save some way more money, you can still do so. Um, one odd thing about this, though, uh, is that there is no iPhone SE anymore, from Apple, at least. Yeah. So my dream of having a single phone shape to design for has been shattered. It is the Tim Cook way, though. He is the supply chain master. He already made all the machines and already made the supply chain for these shapes and parts. He's going to keep yeah. them around for another year, at least. I'm sure they, they all share the same Face ID module. So I think, I'm assuming they're sharing a lot of components, which keeps the costs down, or sorry, keeps the margins high. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's a new iPhone comparison page. So if you're interested in seeing what the new pricing umbrella looks like, or you're looking to see what the new spec, I don't know, spread is. Uh, you can see what that looks like with the new iPhone slash compare web page on the Apple website. Looks really nice. Um, Brian also has linked here to a cool image that somebody drew, probably in MS Paint from the looks of it. Um, <laughs> and, and basically, it's it's a rough proportional outline of each of the phone sizes. So, um, what phones are these? Do you think? Um, I. Th- think it is so if you if you click the image it'll show the the comparison so the smallest ones are the 7 and 8 and the next size up is the 10 or 10s and then the next one is the 10r and then the 10s max and then finally the 7 and 8 plus very nice for like height width that all scales in the same way for normal width the 7 and 8 are you know or i guess Really, they all look about the same, more or less, except the 10R is thicker. Yeah. And the 10R is, you know, I'm sure when you hold it in your hand, you would never know that it's a thick phone, in air quotes, unless you also had in your other hand one of the other phones. Um, But what, it's a millimeter and a half thicker probably in real life, so again, it's probably not that bad. Yeah. Um, Something interesting to note, I'm looking on the comparison page, and... um, the, the battery life of the 10S says 30 minutes or up to 30 minutes longer than the 10. And the 10S Max is up to an hour and a half longer than the 10. And the 10R is up to an hour and a half longer than the 8 Plus. Um, Seems now, good to me. Yeah, so better battery life all around. Um, I bet you that's because of the A12 Bionic. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the low performance cores have up to 50% better power usage. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, they said the performance ones are up to 15% faster. So small yeah. boosts there. But, and, and, um, and of course, the the X, I mean, the 10s Max gets the biggest boost here, um, rel- you know, in terms of time and performance. Because when you make the phone bigger for the display, it's not a linear size increase for the battery. I mean, the battery can get way bigger because it also has thickness. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, um, and they are all fast charge comp- compatible, up to thirty or up to fifty percent charge in 30 minutes and that's they're with all the, wireless chargeable that too that's pretty yeah. cool but you know for fast charging you have to buy like the 30 watt apple USB-C charger and yeah. a new cable so it's a little bit of an investment as well so we didn't get a new iphone se this year at least from this event so yeah, i i think that size is kind of going away so do you think it's going away or do you think they're going to make a new secret one sometime I'm not sure. I hope that if they do make a new smaller one, they up the PPI and make the usable resolution just a little larger because it's it it cramps in interface. And I think a lot of our design these days has really changed, grown with the sizes of the phones. And having to support cool. a screen with 320 points wide is just difficult. You yeah. just can't show very much content there. 
Yeah, I uh, I agree. I've done some design work for the uh, SE specifically, and it is extremely tiny to do any kind of modern style design, which is very white space heavy, as you know. Um, yeah. Got to have your margins. You you do so so maybe I don't know what what was the screen size of the SE? What was that? Was that five? Uh, it's five sixty eight points tall and three hundred twenty points wide. Yeah, at at two X resolution. Yeah, it's it's just not very big. So we'll we'll have to see if they ever make one like that again. I I think it would be good to have a, you know, five. It's hard to even argue for a five point five because that's so close to five point eight. So, what does that really get you? Yeah, I you don't know. know. So we'll we'll see yeah. if there's an SE two maybe at the next event for fun or in the spring, um, you know, just just to throw it out there. We'll see. Could yeah, happen. I think for the the benefit of the SE fans out there is it's internally a iPhone six S, which is probably going to be supported for another two whole years by iOS. So that might be good for it because um, the iPhone five S is still supported by iOS twelve. So, so that 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 being said, um, many people who are friends of mine that are SE fans have had hardware troubles um, with their SEs. So, the primary trouble is that they run out of storage space because they bought the 16 gigabyte model, <laughs> uh, yep. expecting that the iPhone SE would be updated somewhat more frequently than it has been, and it, so it turns out to not be that way right now and then other you know just other more common hardware ailments such as i don't know like the home button stopped working or uh, the camera doesn't work anymore you know that kind of thing so we'll see what happens in the long run yeah keeping keeping an iphone running for six years with constant use is not easy no it's kind of tough you know speaking speaking about what else is tough though is you know what else we didn't get today what what we always wanted new ipads new ipads yeah the, the rumor the rumor had it that we would get new notch full ipads today and we did not i think they're coming just not quite now yep i i think it's a little weird that people were hoping i mean for the most part these fall events have almost entirely only been apple watch or iphone yes maybe i think the ipad pro was announced at the fall event a couple of years ago yeah but other than that it's those are pretty much springtime devices or, so well, I guess, but they, this they, spring, we only got... They've been in late fall now for, for the past couple of years, I think. Yeah. They're going to jam everything into an October event. I think so. October, November. Um, you know what else we didn't get? We didn't get any new Macs. There's been Mac rumors for I the past, past month. I need my new iMac. Yeah, you do. I need my new Mac Sorry, Mini. It's not, even, it's not even new. I need an iMac that is new. <laughs> <laughs> I need, yeah. I need a uh, not Hackintosh a macintosh that's what i need whoa whoa that's amazing a macintosh (laughs) um and then i and then i have one more uh interesting tidbit here um which is what i also refer to as minutia uh and that is you know how we mentioned these phones are wirelessly charging compatible you can in fact just go out to amazon and buy any um chi charger you want and it should charge your iphone just fine yeah but the first party um little rectangle called air power has mysteriously disappeared also it's not a rectangle it's a rounded rect of course rounded rects um so it's disappeared from the website pretty much entirely so there's some speculation on will they even ship it as a product now or was it removed because they've completely revamped it well what's the deal so well we'll just have to see if that also comes at the october event with the iPads, and instead of being a little ra- rounded rect, it's a big rounded rect, so it can also charge your iPad. It'll be the size of those extremely oversized mouse pads. Well, it'll be the size of an iPad. Yeah, the 13 inch. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I think there was one point, or someone posted a screenshot on Twitter that said it, you know, on the iPhone, it was a lot of the information was on the iPhone 10 page, which is now gone because they're not selling that phone anymore. Right. And um, there was one place where it's still around, and it says coming 2018, and now it says currently unavailable. Yeah. So I think they've been having lots of problems that they didn't quite foresee continuing this long. Which is bizarre, because if you've ever taken apart one of these little chargers, it's a coil connected to a power supply. It's not really as hard as they made it. But you it. can't just use a big coil that 
spans the whole thing. You need to have it work for different sizes of coils in these devices and dynamic it, power. And, there is a little bit more complication, but it's not as hard as they made it out to be. We'll see. They're Apple. They can do it. I'm sure so, we'll see some uh, internal d- uh, story in the next five or six years. I'm sure it. we'll see a leak by the end of next month. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, so, Brian, what phone are you going to buy? Um, tentatively leaning towards the 10s Max. I went to the Apple Store this afternoon or evening, and held the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 Plus in my hand just to kind of gauge the weight and the feel. And I just got to say, the iPhone 10 is just gorgeous. That the full screen, the gestures and swiping around, I love it. It's it's hard to visualize on top of the iPhone 8 Plus size and that phone is a bit heavier and that makes me a little uneasy but i know you know there's more horizontal space and vertical space that you can use um i have a, a co-worker who has an iphone 10 and he was saying that he he thinks you know when the iphone 10 came out the screen just got taller not really much wider so things are the aspect ratio of the phone is just kind of long and narrow yeah and the larger size or now the max will kind of alleviate some of that just because it is wider so that's kind of why i'm leading towards that plus the better battery life i've never had a larger phone and you have one and like it i have a coworker who has one and likes it we'll see yeah so i have the note 9 right now and this is a 6.4 inch screen i don't know if the the aspect ratio is quite as you know quite the same but we we looked at the measurements, the dimensions of the two phones earlier, and they're very comparable. And this is a bigger phone compared to what I previously had, which was the 9 Plus. I mean, you can't use your thumb on half the screen, but if you don't care about that as much, it works great. And you can read stuff on it, which is wonderful. Yeah, um, I do find myself reading on my phone more, which is terrible, because I have this iPad sitting right next to me that... I should use more, but I usually mostly just use that to watch YouTube or catch up on Twitter if I have a lot of tweets to watch, yeah. read, sorry, and I'm watching TV or something. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's 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 hard to be an iPad these days. Yeah, they're so, great for kids though. I for sure. Say. So so I uh, I might consider one of these for myself someday, maybe I guess. Uh, we'll see. I, as, we'll as, see, Ryan. As you noted, Brian, <laughs> I have said that every year for the last two years. And it hasn't happened yet. I was looking at the... Um, I, re- I really like the red 10R. But yeah. if I'm going to spend almost $1,000, I might as well spend actually $1,000 to buy the actual flagship. Just like you. So Do we'll it. see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, on the other hand, my grandpa is lo- has been looking for a phone for quite some time now. He has a little iPhone 6... And it is so tiny. I don't know how anybody could use such a tiny little phone. So I think the uh, 10R might be the actual perfect phone for him because he's, he he has expressed interest in getting um, something like a, a an 8 Plus. But why why get an 8 Plus now when you can get an, a, a 10R for only fifty dollars more? Yeah, totally, totally. So. Uh, that might be on his uh, Christmas tree later this year, so we'll see. Yeah, my mom is holding out with an iPhone six as well, and she's thinking she can go another year. We'll see. I'll t- I'll talk to her later this week. Uh, see I mean, if I if can you, convince her otherwise. If you bring her into an Apple store and she sees it, she might just fall for it because it's it's really tempting to go from a tiny little micro screen to a real fully immersive full screen. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So, how was this keynote overall? Uh, that it was it was okay. Um, <laughs> so much know, enthusiasm. Product... <laughs> yeah, max enthusiasm. I will say I was I was quite quite impressed by the Apple Watch Series Four. Um, I wish I could buy one. This could justify buying one right now, but I don't think I can quite do that. Um, the iPhone names were all leaked. Really, there weren't tons of new hardware things in the 10s series. The CPU is a little faster, a few new camera things, but those are just software locks on this model. Um, you know, the a max size, but really, there's not that much different from the iPhone 10. Um, so the 10 the 10R is a little more interesting in that sense. 
Yep. So it was it was okay. It just it felt like an incremental year with like small up small incremental update. Yeah. So it was, it was an incremental year in terms of ten to ten s, and then sort of kind of like a, um, a horizontal movement. So instead of you know making deeper improvements, let's make some horizontal improvements to improve uh, the lineup as a whole, um, and and make the the ten r. So yeah, I agree. Keynote wise, I wasn't even watching the keynote today in real time i was busy working i think that's what they call it anyway so i watched it after the fact and you know it was it was a keynote i mean it's nowhere near as fun as wwdc when craig comes up on stage so um, yeah those are good keynotes to watch those are those are the best i mean any any keynote with craig is the best so um this was good it might not have been wwdc good yeah definitely cool well, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Brian M. Dot, sorry, wow. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L. And you can find me on my website, Brian M. Dot me, where I will likely be writing a review of the new iPhone once I get it. Nice. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, And of course, on my website, RyanRampersad.com. I would like to tell you about interesting things that are coming up in the future, such as our ios 12 review uh on second opinion that'll be out in just a couple of weeks here and it should be very exciting when you get to listen to all of the good ios stuff in ios 12 yes it'll be very 12e 12e and then of course if you would like to listen to what we thought was coming at this event because listening to rumors and then thoughts on rumors is always really funny to do after you know what actually happens if you would like to listen to that you can listen to pocket 41 which you can find at the nexus.tv slash pk 41 and you can listen to uh brian and brandon and i talking all about the weird names that were rumored a week and a half ago instead of (laughs) the weird names that we have now exactly uh i should tell you about patreon i guess uh you should go to patreon.com slash the nexus tv to support us so that we can tell you more about iphones in the future uh they're expensive did you know that um you should go to reddit reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv uh so that we can chat about the new iphones um there's actually been some comments on that reddit so you should go look at that and um, according to my show notes here, Ian R. Buck has edited my document to say, no matter where you are listening, subscribe to the Nexus special in your favorite, uh, what does that say? Podcast player. Um, so you uh, should do that. Yeah. I don't know how you're For- listening to this episode if you're not doing that already, <laughs> but that's that's what the docs say and that's what I have to read. Just remember, uh, non-sponsored at all, your favorite podcast player on iOS is Overcast. In non-sponsored at all, your favorite podcast player on Android is one from the Google Play Store. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yep, I bet. Well, this is a good keynote, Ryan. Uh, thanks for reviewing it with me. And- yep. No problem, Brian. This was It's always fun to uh, do the keynotes here, especially with the iPhones. We've been doing it for a long time, and we're going to continue. I think this marks my fifth year on the Nexus at this very episode. That's so. that's that's incredible. Well, um, it, congratulations. It all started with the iPhone keynote in 2013, I think, if my memory serves correct. It serves. It does serve. <laughs> very good. Well, have a good one. You too. I was off by a whole year. It's six years. It was the Apple iPhone 5 event in 2012. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.